Thank you so much for watching Rift TV. Now this interview is obviously with video, but I don't interview everybody on Zoom. That's why I put it on my Talkin' Rock with Meltdown podcast. We talk to rock artists from all over the genre. So check out Talkin' Rock with Meltdown wherever you get your podcasts. And now to today's video interview. I think last time you were actually in the studio with us. Do you remember that? A couple of, about, about four years ago, it was pre-pandemic. Do you remember that? You came through Detroit. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. that was really cool. And uh, thanks for having me on then. And thanks for having me on now. I wish I could be there in person today. Yeah, you know, that's that that's what happens, I suppose. But we're here to talk about uh the who. This is Mongol Warrior Soul. It's it's funny because like I'm not a musician, but does that band pose any sort of like sonic challenge to somebody like you? Well, they're definitely working with uh instruments and and vocal techniques and textures that are uh largely unfamiliar and exotic to western sensibilities but um but you know i i i take that on as kind of a welcome challenge like how can we um take what's so cool about what they're doing and fuse it with um the kind of thing that i do or at least the kind of thing i'm known for doing and really just make it rock and make it something that's universal for everybody it's a it's really a welcome challenge and kind of an honor to even be uh you know given that opportunity <clears throat> Yeah, and it does work, of course. I mean, obviously, when you're in Alice in Chains and you and Jerry are doing your thing, it's kind of like the yin and the yang. But with 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 that band, I saw those guys last year, and they've got this like kind of chugging sensibility to them, don't they? Yeah, there's a lot of lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of percussive, uh, you know, kind of thumping aggressiveness to what they do. You know, they're they're the they're the the warriors coming down the mountain to take the town. You know, it's kind of their thing. Uh, but it, but yeah, man, it works. It's really yeah, cool. it does work. It was great when I saw them last year. They were probably one of the more interesting bands I saw last year on tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I can imagine. Um, I have yet to actually see them live in concert, uh, you know, where I'm right. I mean, I've seen films, obviously, but uh, but I, I can't wait to uh, see them for real, you know. And uh, it'd also be really cool to jump on stage with them at some point, maybe on this record, you know. Hope that wow. Hope that happens at some point. Yeah, that would be cool. You know, um, yeah, so you've never seen them live. It, it's funny because you watch them and you're like, okay, are they really making these sounds? <laughs> you know, it's, it's got that kind of thing to it. I'm like, you know, it, it's almost hard to believe what's coming off the stage. Yeah, well, you know, throat singing is a really, uh, it's a very, very sort of ancient uh, technique. Um, and it's, it, it takes a lot to, uh, get that down to get that down pat and then we combine it with the bowed instruments and the other stringed instruments and the percussion for sure it's it's definitely a different sound than than what most of us are used to but uh but yeah man it's powerful how they've tried to fuse that with with hard rock and um and obviously you know they they've made some inroads they're they're gaining an audience you know they're they're getting more traction every day but they want to try to expand that. And so I'm hoping maybe this record can, can help them with that. Yeah. And of course, you know, yourself uh, is on a, you know, a song with them. Uh, Jacoby Shaddix has done stuff with them. So this ain't the yeah. first time that they've done stuff like that before. Right. And I'm no, right. I'm, I'm no like Mongolian rock historian. So I don't really know much about, you know, what's going on with, with, with guys like that. You know, I don't know where you place them. All I know is that they were interesting and they really yeah. they keep you focused on that stage. And that's really the main thing at the end of the day, you know, I mean, um, but but I think part of what makes it work is that they are coming from such an authentic place. You know, they really have so much pride in, in where they come from and their history. And and uh, that really comes through. And uh, I think people resonate with that no matter where you're coming from. You know what I mean? Like I, they just resonate with that truth. And uh, that's part of what makes it so powerful. Now, this song was used on the Retaliators movie, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yeah, that's my understanding. Yeah. Have you seen that movie? Because I'm a horror movie fan and I have not seen that movie yet. I don't know why. I have not seen that movie yet. Uh, it is still on the to do list. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely going to check it out. Yeah, because I mean, yourself, like myself, I know guys in the movie and I haven't been able to watch it yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah um same here so yeah at some point i'm definitely going to do that 
Yeah. Well, let's switch gears here. Of course, uh, we got to talk a little Ellis and Chains. Uh, last record came out. I was just listening to it on my turntable to say it's so good. That came out. Uh, it's going to be five years uh, ago now. So what's what's going on with the band? Time's a flying. Um, well, right now, um, you know, not much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we're all we're all kind of just, uh, you know, enjoying our 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 downtime. Uh, you know, apart from that and. Uh, I actually just saw Cantrell last week. Uh, he was he was here in Atlanta um, on his solo tour, and I went down to sound check and said hello to everybody, and that was really nice. Um, but see, that's that's the thing, you know. We when we're when we're actually engaged in Alice stuff, it's like we go at it really hard, and 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 uh, you know, it's full on. It's it's. It, it's such a full on commitment and uh, when we're doing it. And so we uh, it's important for us to take these times away from it. And uh, and and also, you know, like when I saw him the other the other day, it was just it was really nice because it, it he was having time of his life doing doing, you know, looking forward to that gig that night. And, you know, he had this solo band there and, you know, he was just really happy. And I'm really, really happy promoting this new single with the who that I've done and, and uh, you know, talk, I'm doing press most every day. And, and it's just really, you know, in fact, I had interviews that very day that I saw him. So I had to, I had to leave uh, sooner than I would have otherwise left. So I could, uh, you know, talk about this record. And so we're both having a great time, you know, doing, doing this thing. And, and it, it really uh, helps when we come back together, you know, yeah. Oh, so, so you completely like unplug from Alice. Yeah. I mean, there's always like, you know, business things that come up and, you know, emails that have to be answered and that kind of thing, but yeah, unplugging from that, that really intense part <laughs> is important. You know, it's important. Yeah. I saw you guys last year, of course, uh, with uh, Breaking Benjamin and I, you know, I, I've told you before, I'm just an Alice slappy. I just love Alice in Chains. And, um, you know, the, the show was just so good, uh, but that clean stage and just the, the the riffs that come out and the harmonies and stuff, it's, it's just so good. You joined the band, I think, what, 17, 18 years ago, something like that? That's right. Yeah, man. Yeah, 17 years. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, this is kind of like maybe a loaded question, but how did how did that change your life? Ooh, um, well, you know, I think it I think I think it changed things pretty profoundly you know certainly in terms of um you know obviously it, it elevated me onto the world stage in a way that i hadn't been before so that's a fundamental change um and i think that it also um this whole experience i think teaches continues to teach all of us all four of us about being part of something that's bigger than we are any one of us individually um and 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 continuing to try to serve that over a long period of time uh is 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 that's a that's a continual learning experience it really is um and also you know the relationship with the fans uh you know that's the the, the between how the business has changed how technology's changed and how that's a, how that's affected the relationship with fans, like the ability to communicate and interface with them. That's also been a learning curve that we've had to negotiate. And it's, it's, it's just been really interesting, man, this whole thing, this whole ride, you know, like we're all, I think, I, you know, I think we'll all spend the rest of our lives processing the whole experience, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. I never, I never really thought about that before, but yeah, it's like, you know, you're up there on stage. Obviously, people love Alice in Chains. And now you're a huge part of their history as well with three records under your belt and stuff. Uh, but, you know, Alice in Chains means a lot to a lot of people, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It definitely does. And we, you know, we try to honor that with with everything we do, every move we make, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, we don't take that lightly. Yeah. What, are, what is uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the world of Alice in Chains, what is Jerry Cantrell's best riff, would you say? <laughs> what put you on the spot, oh, man? Uh, you know what's his best riff? Uh, you know, there's there's quite a few in there that that uh, you know. I I think I think for for um, 
for our era, like our current era, I, I think Check My Brain was up there because it's it's just I like the deceptive simplicity of it. Yeah, that's yeah. the right answer, by the way, in case you're wondering. Yeah. That is yeah. That. Okay. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad I passed the test. Glad I. <laughs> well, I mean, he like yeah. bends that note. I'm like, wow, that's just crazy. Yeah. Well, you know, we we uh, and and the way we have to lock in to it because I'm playing the higher octave on it, mm. and uh, yeah, you really have to fuse fuse together. It's a bit of a Vulcan mind melt kind of a thing to because you you know you're trying to always keep the bends exactly consistent even though you're in two different octaves mm. and uh and even though um you know i i'm in i'm often having to scream my head off while i'm doing it <laughs> you know <laughs> rubbing, your your head and rubbing your belly is that yeah what you know and and uh you know so whatever i'm doing if i'm you know running around or jumping or screaming or whatever it's like trying to keep those bends really together you know it's kind of interesting <laughs> no doubt no the show was great last year uh, i'm glad i stuck around to uh, see you guys because i think you guys went on stage at like 9 45 or something and i had stuff going on early the, the next day but it's so great to see uh, Alice in chains what other stuff are you working on right now you got anything else you can talk about man uh mostly just uh you know continuing to uh to uh promote the second solo album i did i put it out last year last june uh we're <laughs> We're getting close to being, we're very, we're getting very low on our vinyl supply at our U S store. Um, but that was really cool. Cause that, that was, that, uh, that record is, uh, that was a live in the studio kind of live direct to disc thing that we did where set up a power trio. We went in there and you gotta, you gotta play it, play that album exactly as it's going to be heard because you've got not only is it being mixed in real time as you're playing, but also there's the lacquer cutting engineer, with a needle on the lathe, on the lathe, cutting the grooves that are going to make that LP as you're playing it. So when you play side one, you got to play side one. Four songs straight through. Whatever's happening in between songs is going on the record. Anybody coughs, anybody makes any sounds, whatever, it's all going down. And so I'm really proud of that record and uh, named it after the date it was recorded, uh, November 12th, 21. So we call it 11-12-21 live in studio nashville that's a it's a killer kind of a little landmark in my whole history no no higher wire act quite like making a record like that you yeah, know I, I, did you do that in the um and uh, what what do they call that part of nashville where all the like record row or whatever it's called oh yeah music row music, yeah music row, yeah yeah music row well i mean i guess i hope we we may have earned our our, our little place <laughs> An honorary place in music row you know having done that kind of record there uh but it was a great experience and so doing you know just continuing to kind of promote that and also uh looking to looking to put out my previous band comes with the falls whole catalog on vinyl too because that's something that's long overdue comes with the fall is what kind of led to me meeting Cantrell and this whole thing that's happened all the all the stuff that's happened in the last 20 years has uh largely happened because of that group and I'm very proud of our catalog and and uh and it was meant to be on vinyl really even though we were a cd era band in you know kind of the early 2000s yeah we always cut our stuff to tape we mix it to tape and i you know i've always wanted to put those records out uh you know on vinyl the way we would have loved to have had them when we were growing up you know? yeah I, I still listen to as a matter of fact i was listening to your last record on vinyl today i got to get the uh the devil put dinosaurs here and, and blue gives way to uh black gives way to blue on on uh on on vinyl as well but that's really the way i think that you should listen to stuff that's just me yeah you know it's it's a great way to listen and it's also a nice artifact to have you know what i mean like i've still got records that i was collecting when i was a little kid you know like i mean i've got i've got records from from my parents from my grandparents i mean it it's almost like they be, they can become family heirlooms in a way, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I'm always a proponent for, for vinyl. I love having the artifact, you know, I love having the artwork all big and, you know, it's a, it's a thrill. It's a real yeah, thrill. No doubt. And um, do you, I still have the first record I ever bought, which was uh, ride the lightning. Do you have the first record? Do you remember? Killer. The very first one that made the big impact on me was my cousin Donald's copy of Hendrix Band of Gypsies. Oh. And I still have that. I still have that. And uh, yeah, 
that that's the one that it's all beat up it's scratched it's warped it it's been missing the cover for you know since since the 70s like but i still have that record in the in the paper sleeve and on the paper sleeve donald drew this really psychedelic drawing and so i still have all that and uh and yeah, and it really means even more now because because uh, Donald died last year, uh, actually late twenty one, and um, so you know it. These things, like I said, they become like these heirlooms, these time capsules for these eras in your life, you know. And that was the record that made me want to play music. I was going to ask you, was that what was that what turned the light bulb on for you? That was that's the one for sure, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then you had to go probably get the other ones too, right? Well, you know, I have everything that that he did, you know, like the, you took for talking about Hendrix. Yeah. I mean, I've got volumes and volumes of stuff, but that particular copy of that particular album is the, is kind of the, 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 the foundation stone of everything I've done my whole life. You know what I mean? So having that particular copy still, that's really important. Now you're, you're like around my age and it's like, I, whenever I talk to guys around our age, it's like kiss was a big thing. Were you a kiss fan? Wow. Growing up? Oh, huge, really? huge, huge. Yeah, man, it, it, it was, that was concurrent with my, uh, you know, entering into wanting to play music, right? So, I mean, I, I sort of started out with Hendrix. My, my thing is kind of interesting and weird because my cousin Donald was into like, he was into a lot of different things. He loved a lot of jazz music. He loved a lot, you know, in that time, it was the mid seventies, you know, the fusion era was a thing. And so, my the original record collection that he brought over to my mother's house was it had the Hendrix record, the Band of Gypsies that I still have. It had Roy Ayers, it had Weather Report, um, and I still have all those all those records in my collection that he brought over. But then I got exposed to Kiss, so you know, and Donald didn't really like Kiss. So that was the one thing that we parted ways on. You know, he he was like kind of my my. My he was my cousin, but he was really like my big brother figure. You know, he's like ten years older, and you know, I wanted I wanted him to like everything that I liked. You know, and uh, he couldn't get with Kiss, but but I was a diehard man. And Ace Frehley is is he's still really important. I mean, a lot of the way I attack the guitar is 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 due to him. It really is. Really? So have you had yeah. to meet Ace and tell him this? I'm you know I met him once, like in passing, at like a kind of a it was one of those Ozzy, it was a, it was a, I think it was a dime bash. You know about that? Like they do these things in LA where they have the dime bag, Daryl dime bash. And a lot of people come down and this is in, you know, because it was in LA and, and all that, you get a lot of people that can come down because they're, they live nearby. Um, and so he, he was there. I, I never had that like real like conversation with him though. It was, it was just more of like an impassing thing. We, I think, uh, I had to get on stage. That's what it was. And he showed up right as I was getting ready to go on. I was like, oh, man. You know, <laughs> like, but that is I, so I would love to have that conversation at some point. You attack the guitar like Ace Freely. I know I would have never thought this conversation would go there, but that's an interesting story. For sure. There's, it's a pick attack thing, and it's how you it's how you bend notes. And I know he was also influenced by Jimmy Page and Hendrix. And, you know, I'm sure we have a lot of common influences as well, but there's a very particular way of phrasing and 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 note choices too. He he's he's actually very underrated by a lot of people, I think. I mean, I he's getting more and more credit now because you know, people like Dime, you know, really big him up and you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. um, but yeah, man, I think uh I still feel like he's a bit underrated in a way, you know? Yeah, he he's dope. <laughs> he's really is really cool. What's 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 your what's your favorite riff of his? I got mine in my head. What do you what do you say? Oh my gosh. That's a tough one. I think, man, I think if I had to go down with one, overall, I probably got to go with like, it's, it's somewhere between Strange Ways and Shock Me. It's a really tough, you know what I'm saying? Because that Strange Ways is so cool. And that solo is so bananas, right? Um, but Shock Me is kind of like the anthem, you right. know? Um, but I mean, you know, you say that and then it's like, man, there was a lot of great stuff on that solo album he did too. The first solo album, that was a, I still listen to that. I'll be, I'll be driving around to this day, still listening to all that stuff. I still do it. Um, and I, best. 
Huh? His was the best out of those. Oh, for, by far. Yeah, no contest. And I think I think that was borne out by the sales too. I mean, he he, you know, he had a great day, like sales wise. <laughs> like you know, the rest kind of lagged behind, but he ace was Ace was the one, man. And and I certainly bought it. I bought it right when it came out and I played it to death then. I still play it now. I still play it to death now, you know? Well, shock <laughs> shock me once again is the right answer. So you're you're good at this game. Okay. There you go. Cool. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, William, we'll let you we'll let you go. And listen, when when uh when Allison Chains gets back and that machine starts running again, you'll have to come back and uh, and, and fill us in everything that's going on. Uh because I can't oh, man. Wait to your stuff for from sure. what I see uh, for sure, you know. So Absolutely, dude. Yeah, I look forward to it. You know, I look forward to our past crossing again. Yeah, but uh, everyone should go check out this Ahu song. This is Mongo Warrior Souls. It's just so killer. And it's like, you know, like I said before, you and Jerry, your voice is kind of, you know, you guys kind of mesh like this. But this one, it's like, it's so bizarre, but it kind of works together. Well, I wanted to create more of a call and response on this one. You know what I mean? So so if, if I sing something, I try to make sure that they reply, you know, because because and that was a challenge because I, I produced and mixed that that who single too. So it's like the challenge was how do I keep my thing together, remain true to myself, but also not step on what makes them so cool too. Yeah. So in the, in, you'll hear in this in that single, there's a lot of call and response. Usually, if I sing something, it's not too long before they I have them reply. You know. All and, right, I'm and, have to go back and listen to it again now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. So, but yeah, it was a huge honor to making that record and and thank you for your support of it. It really means a lot. All right, William, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Cool, brother. Right on, dude.